Hello, happy Monday everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful week. Weekend? Sorry, weekend, because beginning of the week. That's the type of Monday I've had so far. So I hope you're doing well. Uh, Monday for me, work-wise, was pretty straightforward, easy going, but on the other side, getting ready for this stream was a bit more than usual. Now I set up some extra cameras, extra lighting, trying a different setup, which I'll show off in a minute. But it's been overall good. I had a good weekend. I got to finish some video editing for a preview of a game, Quest and Cannons, The Risen Islands from Short Hop Games. I was able to release that onto YouTube, so go check out my YouTube page, Play Games Spread Joy, with Javer at the word. You'll see that preview posted today shows off a little bit of the components even though it was prototype it was a really well done prototype talks about the gameplay a little bit but doesn't give away too much i kind of go into the lore a bit a little bit and what they have in the rule book to kind of give a little twist on the regular preview and fortunately enough even though i'm still newer to this the designer of the game who was setting up all of these previews with different content creators really enjoyed what I did with it and was sending it on to their videographer for the Kickstarter to be like, hey, this is what I'm looking for for our Kickstarter video. So they may end up using it as some of a template for what they do, which was really exciting that they liked it that much. But yes, tonight we will be playing Lost Ruins of Arnak. I'll be playing the solo mode. Um, before we get into play too much, I'll, I will I kind of go over what I've done for the setup so we don't spend too much time just setting up the game. Because there's a lot of pieces in the game, which, especially if you're playing with multiplayer, really fast, easy to do. Just a couple of different decks to shuffle, a couple of stacks of, of token chit style, not cards, but they're they go onto the board, so they're thick enough to be manipulated a lot in bigger stacks, but also small enough you can shuffle as a smaller deck or stack of tokens, per se. There's a lot of randomization of some of the pieces, so I did that beforehand and I made sure I would all show up. And it's Kids Planning. Hey, hey, how are you tonight? I hope you had a wonderful day, wonderful weekend. What have you been up to today? Just talking about how this weekend I finished editing and released the video preview for Quest and Canons, which I know y'all have a copy of right now. And I played a game of, uh, what was it, Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. That it was the same scenario that me and Chris badly lost when we streamed, and so I had to go back and visit it solo, and I just beat it now that I understand all the rules. But tonight, I'll be playing Lost Ruins of Arnak. I don't know if y'all have played this yet or not. Let me know if you have or have not. I'll be showing off the solo mode and how well it works, which plays about the same as a multiplayer game. It uses an AI system to verify what they call it. The Rival. Seeing good and busy editing, Zoom meetings, homeschooling, like all the things, you know, all the things. Well, I hope you're well. And that even though you're busy, it's the good kind of busy. Oh, you can't find a copy. Is it still basically sold out around you? Like, I've gone to Barnes & Noble a couple of times around here, and I see it almost every time. Maybe I'll have to grab a copy and send it your way with the, the rest of the games from my purge pile to make sure y'all finally get a copy. Kicking my bro. Broken foot. <laughs> boot this week. Okay. I was, I was like, wait, who are you kicking? <laughs> Broken foot boot. Oh, so I'm glad that's healing up well enough and and that you progressing through the healing process with the boot. And you're happy tonight, apparently. Type in too fast because you're excited to talk. 
Well, I love that because it, it means someone's here in chat hanging out. But I still have fun on nights that no one talks in chat or people can't show up. It's always a lot more fun, especially when you're here. Because I know y'all are playing some of the same games and how excited y'all get about them. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over. Hopefully this overlay works so I can show off the game. You'll see me in a different camera now because I set up some different cameras. So you'll see over here to my right is the main board. The main difference from what you'll typically see is this board up here is typically over at the bottom, but to fit it in well on camera and with all of my setup, I kind of moved it around. But that primarily has the stacks of the temple tiles and the you're editing quick sorcerer city unboxing for Instagram. Nice. Look forward to seeing. And it's James. Hello. How are you today? I hope you had a wonderful weekend and a wonderful Monday. I'm glad you are here. And yes, welcome, friend. So we got kids planning in chat as well. Well, I'm I'm trying the different angles. Typically, I just have the top down, and then this one right here is some details. Hopefully, it doesn't. Oh, but one to auto adjust some stuff, so I'll have to watch that. Um, but yeah, I set up another webcam this way, so as I'm turning and looking at the game, y'all can see me. Hopefully this works, because it feels weird not seeing myself as I turn. So I'll have to turn for the chat. Um, weekend was good. Felt felt too short, but good. I, I feel every weekend is too short. But I, I made the most of it this weekend. Finished some video editing. You probably saw I released a preview video on my YouTube and then I spent some time presetting this up and adjusting a lot of my camera and the overlay because you probably can tell this is a different overlay than I typically use. Um, so this is the solo setup, um, but the, the thing that stays the same through all, all multiplayer games and solo is the rows of cards up here and how they progress through the rounds. All of these tiles get set out randomly with stacks up here based on the number of players. All these little tile uh, idle tokens are set out randomly. You always have a starting deck of exploration cards, two funding cards, and two fear cards, which always get shuffled. But for the solo play, we set up the rival. So the rival has action tokens. There's some basic ones that are always in the game. And then some basically easy or hard tokens that have pairs and you select either the easy or the hard option from each pair. So then you always total up to 10 tokens. So in this setup, I took uh, two of the hard tokens. So it puts it at about a three out of six difficulty, approximately. Um, because if you took all green, it'd be like a zero or slash one difficulty, and the highest is like a five slash six if you took all red hard ones. So I figured not too hard while I'm showing it off, and y'all can see more of it, and it's been a little while since I played solo. So James, have you played this yet? Uh, I know Kid Splaining is still waiting to find a copy near them. I don't know how, how easy or hard it is to find a copy where you are, or if you've actually picked it up. Let me know. And then, of course, if you have rules, questions as I play, you have not played it. Well, glad you have a chance to at least see it played. Um, and then hopefully you can decide how much you like it, and if you want to get your own copy. I believe it's also on Board Game Arena right now as well. I'd have to verify that. I like it. Um, I, I know diff everyone likes it for different reasons. It's a very tight resource management game um, at its core with both worker placement and deck building mixed together. And how much deck building you do is kind of up to you. Um, so during the game, the stuff at the bottom is already open as places to go visit and gain resources. 
during the game you can explore the upper ones to turn over some of these tiles dig sites either one or two level which each of those have additional resources kids planning saying uh, that their birthday is next month so I'm holding your breath that we can find it by then well I hope so too because that would be a wonderful birthday present for you and now it makes me even more tempted to make sure if I find a copy around me, if I go and kind of sneakily pick it up and send it your way. I think last year I sent you a copy of Calico around the same time and you just got a birthday present slash a fun summer for y'all. <laughs> okay, so in a solo game, the rival will always go first. So on a rival's turn, you, f you take one of the tokens from the t stack and flip it over and then based on what is on it you do certain actions so in this case it wants to place a worker or dig at a site that gives th this resource currently the only sites that are available James just got calico wonderful wonderful um, so it's going to attempt to place a worker at a site that has that resource Currently, there's only five sites open to dig at. And so it uses the extra player workers from the color you don't select a solo. So I'm playing as blue. So it's going to be playing green, red, and yellow workers. So it's going to come down here and basically block that resource. And now, if there's multiple options that provide that resource, there's a hierarchy of highest site to lowest, and then if there's still a tie, it uses the arrow on the next part of the stack, left or right. And so that would be its turn. So on, I need to shuffle, finish shuffling, and grab my hand of cards. So each round, a player will have five cards from their deck. So I'll go and show you what I have out right now. You can also see it here. I'll probably try to lay it out so y'all can see like this. So these cards can do multiple things as you play. Fear cards, if you have them in your deck at the end of the game, score you negative points. But they also have a travel value of a boot. The boot is used, or can only be used to travel to the sites at the bottom of the board, because they use boots. If you're playing a multiplayer game, they actually some of these are actually uncovered and can be double booted, so more than one person can travel there. But in this case, they each have only one space available to travel to those sites. So, you have options on your turn to base if you want to place a worker you can pay use a card from your hand and use its travel cost in the upper corner to place at a site that has that travel icon so we have boots buggies boats and where is it i mean it may just be on the cards there's also airplanes but airplanes basically go down and can basically take you anywhere a boot is this Canadian stream. <laughs> what is this? This little boot. <laughs> we'll see how many times I can say boot t tonight. <laughs> and the, so if you see, some of these cards have the buggy icon. Some have the boats. Both buggies and boats can go to boot places, but cannot go to, like a boat cannot go to a buggy place, and a buggy cannot go to a boat place. It's kind of like water and land travel, essentially. So, any of these cards with a lightning bolt icon, and there's some li other lightning bolts throughout the game, that's considered a free action. You can do it for free on your turn. Typically, you can do one main action and as many free actions as you choose. So, some of the main actions you can do is you can 
dig at a site. So pay the travel cost from a card, placing a worker down at a site. Whenever you go to a site, you get the resource. Kind of a standard worker placement mechanic right there. You can also discover a new site. So any of these sites up here with idle tokens, there is first a discover compass cost. Um, the one sites take three compasses. Up here they require six. And you still have to pay the travel cost from a card as well. And then place your worker. When you go up here, you get the bonus from the t idle token. You get the idle token onto your board. And then you also then reveal sites which have bonuses. But anytime you reveal a site, you also add in one of these monsters on top of it. They get flipped over and revealed. And then if you're left on a place with the monster at the end of a round, you can score another fear card. So we have artifacts and we also have, let me get, make sure I get the names of these right. So we have items and artifacts. And then each round, we're gonna steadily have more artifacts and less items in the rows. So this wand actually tracks the rounds and then always to the left, artifacts, right as items. So one of the main actions is you can buy a card, paying the cost at the bottom of the card, either coins or compass. If it is an artifact, you get to immediately do what's on the card and then it goes into your spent cards, basically discard pile. But then later, if you draw it again, if you want to do the action on the card, it would cost you, uh, oh, what do they call these again? The tablets. But the items, they immediately go to the bottom of your deck when you buy it. And they will have different actions on them. Some talk, some talk about exiling, some talk about have some free actions, some have choices. And so you always have the choice to either use the bottom part of a card or you can use the top for a travel cost. You can also do research to advance up the research track, which this is the crux of the game where you can score the majority of your points by the end. Like you're going to score bits and pieces of points from all these icons and cards you get, but I've found whoever travels the highest on this track typically wins. And so in the same way you'll spend resources to advance, the key to this is you have two tokens that can travel up it. You have your research book, and you have your magnifying glass. Your research book can never be at a higher level than your magnifying glass. They can be at the same, but it can never advance faster. So you'd have to advance your magnifying glass before the book. And then there's bonuses along the edge of the board when you advance either the magnifying glass or your book, you also get a bonus immediately and a resource back. Um, and then basically each round as you take as many turns as you can perform actions and then as soon as you pass, you're out for the round. So especially in a multiplayer game, you may have rounds where someone's playing a couple extra turns, but it goes pretty fast. So the first round or two of this game seem to go really fast. The later rounds go more because you can start performing a lot more actions with the cards you've acquired and resources you have. So with that, I believe we're ready to begin. So everyone, each player typically always has two workers. The rival is going to have some extra. Um, in a solo, you always play second. So you're going to start with one coin, one compass, which I have ready for me. I've put all my resources up above the board. Typically, they do sit on this extra board that folds out below the whole board. But to fit it on screen, this is what I've done. Because the main thing, you won't be able to see the, uh, the assistants. Because during the game, you can, you can pick from those. And the stacks of tiles I've shuffled sit onto the side, right? As you can see up in this corner. Typically, they would be at the bottom of the board with resources laid out. So we've taken the first turn for the rival, so that would make it my turn. If y'all have a suggestion on what y'all want me to do first. Yes, it is a very big board. Um, and especially once everyone gets their own individual board, which this right here is actually two boards. You have this small board. Each player gets one of those. 
Um, but yeah, the board itself is probably two and a half feet long by at least 20 inches wide, give or take. The table I'm playing on is two foot wide by three foot, and there's only four, four or five inches on the width left, and I'm not even 10 inches on the height left, and I don't even have the bottom of the board truly unfolded. But I'm probably taking about the same amount of space just up here at the top. So yes, you will want plenty of table space if you play this. But there are ways you can kind of take out the bottom board. If you don't have to have it there, you can just set your stacks to the side to save a little bit of space. Um, so some of these cards, like, I can attempt to buy this round, get them on my deck faster, which will be helpful. If I want to start advancing up the research track, I have an option of needing a ruby or a compass with an arrowhead, or the two track options down here at the bottom. So I think exploring, or at least going to a dig site at the bottom before too many get blocked off is going to be one of my better options. I can either go for coins or go for compasses. I think are my two strongest options. So this artifact, the Cleansing Cauldron, is basically draw a card and allows me to uh, exile a card, which is get rid of a card from my from my hand, take it completely out of the game. So that's a way to get rid of fear cards. It would cost me three compass and good for one point at the end of the game, and that would, but I would have to spend tablets each time. So I typically lean towards item cards first few rounds, last few rounds, then I'll lean back into the artifacts. So I do have one coin right now. I could buy some sturdy boots, which when I get to it in a future turn, gains me a compass and place a worker with a discount of two boots. So that kind of doubles up, allowing me to place a worker and gain a resource at the same time, as opposed to just using the card for their travel cost. Over here in Ostrich would allow me to draw cards and place workers with the discount as well. We have I Exile, Gain Tablet, or over here we have Gain Compass for each idol I would have, up to three. So right now, since I, it's going to be a while before I get a lot of those, I'll probably not do the brush as much. If you're exploring a lot, that's a good option. Uh, the Bear Trap, two coins, Exile, this card to overcome one of the monsters on a site not occupied by any other player which that is likely to happen a decent amount in this game because of the rival and the way it cycles and not doesn't fully attack so that's not a bad one for me to consider getting because all of these monsters are always worth five points at the end of the game so you want me to explore so basically dig i'm assuming So if I wanted to explore up here, I'm going to need more compasses first. Or I could, where the option is, if you want me to go up here earlier, I could spend two of my ex free action cards to get compasses that would give me enough compasses. But then I'd have to spend another, get you a compass. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll spend a fear card with its boot to travel down here to the boot site that gives us two compasses. So that is considered a main action. While I could do any of the free actions on the cards, I'll wait and see what the rival does next turn before deciding to spend those because I might need to use those for a travel instead. Boot time to get compass. It's about time I went. Okay, so then the rival would go again. We flip over the top of the stack. So this symbol is they would take, I believe, let's get this right. So they buy an artifact. And so depending on the arrow, so this is more important in later rounds when there's multiple artifact cards out. The arrow is down because we're playing the green. When the arrow's down, it looks for the lowest 
value scoring card of the artifacts showing. So in this case, it's going to take this only one available, take it to its own stack for the end of the game scoring. And when any card is bought, a new one's immediately revealed. So we've revealed the Obsidian Earring, which allows a player to draw up to two cards from the bottom of their deck, keep one, and then I believe that's discard the other one. Coin, 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 okay. So here is my thought. We'll see if you agree with me. We have enough compasses to come up here now. I don't know how well you can see it on your screen. Each of these idols gives a small bonus when you go there. There are some coins, compass, exile cards. And when you exile a card, it can be from your hand or from your discard pile that you've already played for that round. Now, my thought is we know we want to attempt to buy an item, so we're going to need coins. So going to a site that gives us a coin, guaranteed, would be good. So we can either go to a buggy site or a boat site. And so that would mean spending either a boat or a buggy to explore. But that would mean we can't get the free action off of it. Oh, you're, you're good. Good spending. Don't worry about it. I, I know you're busy and being productive, and I appreciate you being here. Even if you can't chat the whole time, even you being logged in and watching helps my viewer count, which right now I'm trying to bump it just above so I can hit affiliate, which gives everyone watching extra options. Coin to go up research track, right? Uh, to go up the research track, we either need a ruby a red ruby or one compass plus an arrowhead so the only way to get that right now immediately so we could explore to get coins yeah so the other option because you mentioned that like if we since you can always downgrade a buggy or a boat to a boot we could still explore down low, uh, get an arrowhead, advance here, and that does give us the one coin. Or we can go over here, do the same thing, get a ruby, but that means we would have to play an extra card to our discard. Corner arrowhead, I think, is a good option. Yeah, because I, I'm thinking of buying a card, so I'm going to go to a coin site. Now, I think for now, to leave my options open later in the game, so there's still one of each, I'm going to go to a buggy site, or no, a boat site. So that means I need to use one boat to place the worker. And immediately when you do that, you have to spend the compasses. So I'm going to spend the three compasses first before you gain any bonuses. And now we take that goes to our player board we get the one coin and we turn it over now in this currently these need to stay below this top row because during the game you can spin these as free actions to do to gain extra resources but every time you do that they loot you lose so many points you can gain at the end of the game by covering up those spots but I'm gonna leave that there and so here's what happens when we explore site. This is a level one site. So from the level one stack, we're going to reveal it. And then immediately we get whatever's on that card or tile. So I'll show it here so it's a little bit easier to see. The, this means we immediately gain a fear card, one compass, one ruby. So one compass, one ruby. That fear card. I believe goes to our discard, but let me verify what happens when you immediately get a card like that. Because I could be wrong. 
you must take a fear card from the board and put it face up in your play area. So when you put a card face up in your play area, it basically indicates it's in your discard. Yeah, the compass and ruby is actually going to help us out because we can use the ruby to advance up the research track. So that was a main action for that turn. So then that means we have to go back to the rival again. So this means it wants to send a worker to cover a arrowhead location, which isn't a terrible thing for it to happen right now because we don't have any workers left for this round. So we're not worried about it stopping places. Uh, oh, one thing we did forget to do is we, ha we forgot to bring out one of the beasts. That beast is immediately right here. Now, on a future turn, well, basically it's back to our turn already, but not on the turn that you explore and find that, but on any future turn, not necessarily round, you can spend what's shown on the tile, in this case it's an aeroplane, an arrowhead, to defeat the beast and take it to your play area for points at the end of the game. So I know I can't defeat that this round because I don't have a plane at all because no one starts with the plane. And so I know I'm going to get at least one more fear card now. So I currently have a ruby which would allow me to Spending that allows me to, yeah, exactly, points. Allows me to advance up the track, would gain me a coin. Now, since I can't use these for travel costs anymore, because I'm out of workers, I'm just going to go ahead and spend them all as free actions to get their resources. Because there's no reason to wait on that now. So that means I'm going to get two coins and one compass, so we can easily see what all we're working with. Okay, let me verify. So I know I'm going to buy a card. I just With these cards, I'm going to make sure which direction they move when you buy, so we don't get that wrong. But yes, buying points is always amazing. Yeah, so refilling the card row always means moving cards towards the staff. So on this side, it always moves this way. These will always move to the right. And then also at the end of each round, cards next to the staff are always discarded. So if there are ones you like, aim to get them early so they don't disappear on you. Um, I know we talked about it earlier so we can think about and see what else comes out. I'm going to go and buy the bear trap for two coins. Which is also a point at the end of the game. I can pick it up. So any of these item cards automatically go to the bottom of your current deck. Now we slide over and reveal. And that is an aeroplane. Uh, allows you to place with the discount of one plane. If discovering a new site, you also have a discount of two compasses. So that does make exploring out here a lot cheaper, which isn't a bad option. Uh, that counts as a main action to buy a card. So we're going to do the next rival step. This time it is... Let's make sure I get the symbol shot. Overcome a guardian. If there is a guardian on a site occupied by the rival, which currently the rival is not on a site with the guardian. So this basically has no effect for this round. So you would use it, um, move it to the rival's board, so you'd take that guardian to the rival's board for scoring at the end of the game. So no effect right now, which is really nice for us. Because we want the points of that guardian. And then, let's see, I've 
two compasses. Probably hold on to those. I say we spin the ruby and start advancing. Unless I hear you say nay, I think, since you mentioned the research track earlier, and it helps us points, gets us coins, I think is our next step. Bear trap. <laughs> but I like bears. Yes, but when you're on an island exploring in the jungle by yourself, do you want to stumble upon a bear? In this case, a guardian bear. Not really. You want to protect yourself. So, typically I like bears too. <laughs> Bear trap, Michael. <laughs> but I like bear. If that is a direct reference from something, unfortunately, I'm not sure what it is at the moment. Um, but yes, I'm going to spin the ruby and advance my magnifying glass first. Because remember, I cannot advance my research book until my magnifying is at a certain level. Now, mind you, as we go up this track, uh, it does kind of fork off and come back together. And so it does dictate the next step in the row, meaning the next will have to be a tablet and an arrowhead. If we had gone to the left, you have the choice between ruby or the tablet arrowhead. Now, some of these spaces will have bonuses as you get there, those come off the board, so it's basically first one to get there gets that bonus. And this does, the rival does have ways to advance up the track by itself. Oh, that's what I missed. So, what I missed on the Guardian's last turn is if your rival has no archaeologist on site with the Guardian, they instead research. So, I should have had them research moving up the track. And then using left or right as an option on from these, it, ha it chooses the left side. So this is what starts to dictate how it can take away stuff. They just, they, in this case, they don't do anything with the assistance, but on certain moves, they will uh, start to deplete the assistance. So your choices change, like in a multiplayer game, which is nice. Um, that was their previous turn. Now we can go to their actual turn because I was talking too much and missed part of their turn. So now we have, this one is broken up based on what round it is. We are in round one. So in round one, this means the rival discovers a new site of the level shown. In this case, it's a level one site. So we take from the level one. So if there are multiple Undiscovered sites. First, narrow the choices down to one row. Among the one sites, give preference to the bottom row. So bottom row. Then use the decision arrow, far right. So it will take this space right here. So first off, it's going to take the idle token and put it uh, face up in one of the slots. Now, if they end up getting more of the same idle token, they start to get negative points. Hello, Rolling with Rock. I hope you're well today. Uh, saying that you love the game, got to play for the first time on BGA last week. Hope you're having a good stream. I am so far. We have Kit Splaining here, and we have James. Uh, I probably messed up. Uh, is it Brazil? Brazil? It's always James to me. Um, hanging out with me. Um, yes, so it is on BGA. That's what I thought. I'm showing off the solo mode tonight. Not doing the solo campaign currently, just a solo. So like the country. Thank you, James. If if you prefer me to say James or James Brazil, just let me know. So in this case, it dis the rival discovered a new site. It takes that idol and covers the current slot with the same token. Now, if it gets another one of those, it goes face down and can get negative points for discovering the same type. Well, thank you, James. So then we do reveal what that new site is. Of course, it being the rival, they're not collecting resources. But that does open up a site for the future we can go to. And we don't have to worry about there being a guardian at that site. Because in this round, it does not show the guardian on the rival tile. Give you a little zoom on that. 
but in rounds two and four, it will add guardians. So that was the rival's turn. It's back to our turn again. And we have the choice to figure out what we would like to do. We're sitting at no cards left in hand, two coins, two compasses, and one idol on our board. Now we have a guardian we cannot defeat because it requires an arrowhead and a plane. Our next step up the track would need a ruby or arrowhead with compass or arrowhead with a tablet. Fast back and forth with the rival. Yeah, once you get used to the rival icons, it's pretty back and uh, fast to go back and forth between your turn and its turn. Uh, but yeah, James has been helping me decide what kind of moves we should make. If you have suggestions on what you see that we should do next, feel free to bring it up. I love having chat help me decide what to do. It is, while it is a solo game, collectively chat and myself are the solo side. Um, we could potentially buy another card for two coins, if y'all would like to. We could turn, use our idol, cover up on our spaces, turn a coin into a ruby, allowing us to advance up the track and start by getting an assistant. Which the current assistants allow us to either upgrade from tablet to arrowhead, arrowhead to ruby. There's a gain a compass, or there's draw a card, and then basically discard a card. So two coins currently. We could either buy our sturdy boots, which give us a compass and placing a work with a discount of two boots, or the torch of exile a card and gain a tablet when it's played. Buying coin seems good, but want to go up the research track. Yeah, so it's 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 a good balance of which one we want. Um, the tablet's going to help us a lot because in the future there's a lot of tablet steps. So getting a card that gives us tablets is helpful, and we know we're getting fear cards. So I like the idea of the torch. Um, of course we could spend the idol to get an arrowhead allowing us to go take our, ta our book up this direction instead I just don't know how early y'all want to spend our idol which is essentially a one point one point loss on our end because it's one point less we can get by the end of the game I'm, well, we can decide it next turn. I'm thinking two coins by the torch, unless I hear any naysayers. Because I've, I've seen James says cards, and it is a pretty solid card to have in play. Give you all a quick torch is good, okay. I've got the go-ahead. So for my main action, buying the torch. And again, it goes to the bottom of the deck. Advance this over. Reveal. Move back to the rival turn. This is the advance up the research track. And then the assistant. So first we advance their magnifying glass, which they are the red one. If you need to use a, choose a space, because it does have a choice between right and left with this spot, we use the arrow, so it does go to the right, taking that bonus token. And that just removes it from the game. So we can no longer gain that. It's kind of like some like an, another player taking that bonus before you can get there. And then if there is a research bonus tile there, we remove it. If a rival cannot advance because they've already reached the boss temple. And then we also take the topmost assistant from the highest stack on the supply board. So we have three stacks of assistance right here. Typically they are at the bottom of the board uh, for rolling with rock. I have this set up up here so it's easier to show it on my camera. But, I'm, but you've probably seen it at the bottom. 
So these three stacks at the beginning of the game have been randomized and then three even stacks. So in this case, they're all the same. So we do have to use the arrow. So that means the far right one is removed from the game. So that's something I can no longer pick again. And that is how that rival token works. And yep. And we are playing on the bird side and not the snake side. If you played the snake side of the board, it's kind of the advanced side of the board with some of these bonuses being slightly different. But this is the the basic side of the board we're playing with. So that brings us back to our turn. Do we want to do something? We can pass for the rest of the round. We're allowed to do that. Or we, our only option right now is to basically spend our idol for one of the bonus bonuses right here which would then allow us to do a little bit more this round or we can just wait for a future round to do it because at this point advancing here we get no bonus it can't block this one the only thing it would allow us to do is get an assistant right now so spin the idol okay so we will spin the idol now the question is which bonus do you want me to take? We have the option of, well, we can't spend a coin for a ruby anymore. We can get an arrowhead. We could get two tablets, which with the card we bought, we're going to start getting a lot of tablets. So I don't think we should do that. We could get one coin and one compass, which we couldn't really use right now. Or we could draw a card. We do know because of our starting deck, the card we would draw would be a fear card. And so I don't feel that's worth spending on right now. Because our starting hand was the two explorers and two um, funding cards and one fear. Arrowhead, we needed to beat the guardian. True. We won't be able to beat it this round, though. Because we don't have an airplane. So we're going to get a fear card regardless. And then that's going to open it back up because we move at the end of the round back to our board. So while I agree we would need the arrowhead, we also bought a card that allows us to defeat a guardian for free. Which we know we will draw next hand. And so while we can use the arrowhead with the compass we already have, we could start advancing our book. We have saying, oh, Arnak. Uh, is that Loller617? Unfortunately, I cannot read that language. I do hope you're having a wonderful day. And yes, we are playing Lost Ruins of Our Neck. I hope it's a game that you have enjoyed. Um, unfortunately, yes, hi, welcome. I am Jaybird the Word. I like to play games and spread joy. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure what the language is that you've been typing. Um, if there is a certain name you want me to call you besides Loller, feel free to put in chat. Uh, we are currently in English chat because it is what I know the best. But yes, hello and welcome. So we are currently discussing, James decided we should spend our idol. I agree with the arrowhead, but for a different reason, James. So I will take the arrowhead. Now, because there's a lightning bolt that was considered a free action. We love shoes. I wonder if you're talking about the sturdy boots. Okay, so James, um, I think we should then, sp we still have a main action we can do this turn. Oh, not snake. Yep. Um, let's see. We can advance here with a, a book, which allows us to get an assistant. And we can choose potentially the one that allows us to upgrade stuff. Because we know we're going to start getting tablets. And we can start upgrading tablets to arrowheads and rubies a lot easier. Instead of just gaining a lot of 
unless we want to gain a lot of compasses. I don't think we'll need as many compasses because we do have that card that lets us defeat stuff for free. Assistant is good. Okay. So I'm going to spend Arrowhead Compass, advance up here, and take this assistant under a board. Bird shoes. Not good. <laughs> true. Very true. Oh, that it's probably possibly that the sturdy boots are not as good on the bird side of the map. Might be what he's saying. Okay, so James, so you can see that the assistants do have a free action icon on them. Oh, that's just outside of the range of the board or the camera. Hopefully you can see it now. Okay, so that allows us to use that assistant for free basically once per round. At a certain point, once we advance up the track, we can flip it to its other gold side, which has an additional bonus of also a compass when we use them. So that was our main action, to buy him, to advance and get him. So we go to the next rival action. This is placing a worker on ruby spots. There's only one available, so it does that pretty quickly. And I believe at this point, we're going to pass for the rest of the round. So we will, we will finish all the rival's turns and then move on to the between rounds, reset and next round. So the next one is it wants to take an item of the lowest point value starting from the right side. There's two ones with the right one. It will take the ostrich. These refill again. Place a worker on a coin space right there. Place a worker on a compass space which it's been filled. There are no more currently available open spaces so it just doesn't go because that's a dig action not a, a discover a new site so that that's the round so for the rival we take all of its tokens and we shuffle them and then this card here and here the ones next to the staff get discarded we advance it over to the round two we get two node cards. All of these workers will go back. I get that one back. Because I'm still here at the end of the round, I do get a fear card because I was at a site with the guardian. And then at the end of the round, after all of that, you shuffle your cards in your player, your basically all your discards, and place them at the bottom of your deck. So in this way, you always any new cards that you've been buying, you'll always see before the cards from the previous round that were already played. And that way, this it's kind of the small deck builder system there. But now for these future rounds, we have additional sites we can go to for resources that give us a lot more than the basic sites do. So there's the rival stack. If we had used the assistant, we would turn it back, allowing us to use it again for this round. So we return our workers, gain our fear. We've done that. Shuffle all the cards in your play area. Put them at the bottom of our deck, which we're doing right now. We would refresh assistants, which I just talked about turning them back. We would advance the card row, exiling the two cards next to the moon staff and moving the moon staff, and then refill the row. And then to start the new round. Typically, if you're playing multiplayer, you'd pass the start playing marker. Um, and then we draw five cards. So uh, he's saying, uh, there are a lot of games I haven't played on my bookshelf. <laughs> I'm jealous. Well, thank you. Um, what you see basically on my bookshelf that way is stuff I'm keeping in. It's hard to see most of it. Um, what you see on the table behind me, that's actually my purge pile. Uh, about a week ago, I went through all of my games and culled them and decided which ones I wanted to keep, which ones I wanted to sell or give away or donate. 
whatever it may be. And I ended up with about 200 games I'm getting rid of. And mind you, I still have at least 300. But that is over, over about at least eight years of gaming. Um, and I'm fortunate enough to have a job that pays well enough to support my love for the hobby. And I've bought a lot of games on like Christmas sales and stuff like that. Yeah, so Kids Planning is going to get Space Space. Uh, James, uh, feel free to reach out to me on Discord if you're interested in seeing the list. Uh, let's say the games that they're impressed are the Gaia Project and the Grand Austria Hotel. Do I know that? I've heard about them. Those are actually two games I have not played and don't own yet. Uh, if I have a chance to play them, I'd be more than happy to try them. I'm kind of considering myself an omni gamer in that I will try any game at least once. Can't guarantee I will enjoy them all, but I give every game a chance. So at least I can learn about the different mechanics and the different themes and how the more we've designed and expanded gaming, how each has influenced future games is the fun thing to see on that. Because you have to think how many different games have influenced the designers of Arnak to bring the worker placement and the deck building and the resource management all together in such a fun way. At least what I consider fun. Okay, and we draw the five cards. One, two, three, four, five. So we do know some of the cards we'll be getting because we had some at our deck already. So we're going to have a fear card, the bear trap, the torch, and then funding exploration. Now, let's see if I can draw it. There we go. The rival always goes first in a two-player game. Good planning is the same. Too young in the hobby to narrow down games to our style of game. The thing is, you don't have to have your own style. Like, to me, it is, there are certain games I enjoy with certain people. So, I, like, sometimes I'll enjoy a nice take that game, but then some people don't enjoy it, and so I won't enjoy it because they're not enjoying it. So, to me, it's dictated by who I play with and not necessarily the game itself. Uh, they're saying, in Korea, this game is in Korean and is very popular. It's a pity that I haven't tried it. Okay. Well, hopefully one day I do. Um, tell me, what are some of your favorite parts about it? and why you enjoy it so much. So let's see what the assistant does first. So first off, they are going to take an item of the lowest point value. Uh, there's one and one. Arrow means it takes the right one. Refill. Or oh, prefer the middleweight games? Um, probably middleweight is my go-to. Uh, but I've enjoyed light party games. I've enjoyed a few heavier games. But nothing says I'm not like I'm more than willing to try all the different styles. Okay, so I think first off. Um. Well, we have the choice. We can take this bear trap, immediately exile it, meaning it's a one-time use, and we can get rid of this guardian, which is going to be harder to travel to because it takes an airplane. Well, we can travel there. It's harder to defeat because it takes an airplane and an arrowhead. And we can do it before the rival has a chance to take it off the board so unless y'all disagree with that I think that's going to be my first option of play um, in the round we can also use our torch to get to exile our fear card and get a tablet give her the guardian so that guardian's actually going to come to our board for points by the end of the game which is nice so I'm going to take this bear trap and we're going to exile it take it out of the game and so that's going to come over to this item stack of exiled cards we're going to take this to here. Now, this is five points guaranteed at the end of the game. 
But before we do that, any time during the game, a one-time use, we can use it as a free action to exile a card from our hand or play area. So that's another way we can get rid of fear cards. Plane is a very good card. Um, yeah, so this airplane is very helpful if we can get enough coins to do it. So definitely a good idea. I agree. It is a very strong card because it basically allows you to travel anywhere on the board. So you don't get stuck only going buggy, boat, or boot. So because that was our main action, that's playing a card for its effect as a main action. Unless it says free or it has a lightning bolt. So our, the next rival action is going to place a worker on a place that gives coins. And because we always take priority of from top to bottom, we check and make sure if any of these sites can give you coins, they do not. So it's going to come down here, cover the coin slot. Which is a little hard on us because we're going to we would have liked to have more coins but that does leave us open these sites up here now they do give us fear cards but uh, we can either get a tablet and a ruby or a compass and a ruby and we know we're going to need a ruby to advance our journal down here now granted we can't advance the journal so we advance the magnifying glass which we need an arrowhead and a tablet for So I'm thinking our first action to get us on track to that, use our fear card for its boot, travel down here and get an arrowhead before it ever gets blocked. Because we do know later we can use the torch to then exile that fear card, get a tablet. We'll have both a tablet and an arrowhead to advance or magnifying glass. And then, if we choose, we can still use a boat later to travel to one of those two. If you disagree, feel free to say so now. I think that's what my general thought process is for the next few turns. Yeah, to, and be able, to be able to even get that plane, we're going to need a lot more coins, which I can't really do that. Yeah, so the torch is going to be nice to use, especially with the fear cards we're accumulating. So I think, unless you all disagree, I'm going to go and play this for the boot. Take this down here and get our arrowhead. Place that as played right here. So you can see I've played it just out of the side. That would take our turn to do. Fear is bye-bye. Yeah, I'll get rid of the fear, but the good way to do it is to use the fear card first for its boot ability if you can before exiling it so you make the most of every card so in this case we get the next rival action so a good thing we went and dealt with the guardian because it is looking for a guardian to defeat and then it will also advance up the research track to here So yeah, now what we can do, we'll play the torch. This fear card is out of the game. So you can put it here if it's out of your deck, basically. That also gains us a tablet. Now that was a full action, but probably next turn we'll use the arrowhead and tablet to start advancing this way which will give us another compass at least too because the magnifying glass gets your compass when it advances. So the next rival action is it's going to place a worker at a place that gives an arrowhead. So we check the top ones, no arrowhead, no arrowhead. So it actually doesn't get to place anything. Kind of a, a nice little benefit of the randomness of it coming out. You do have a few turns where it basically does nothing to stop you. And then next up we talked about we're going to go ahead and place so spin this to advance that right 
there. It gains us a compass because of the bonus over here. And that will be our main action for that turn. Next up, we have the worker trying to place at a place that provides a ruby. So this is where it gets a little tricky and you do play, you do check for the order of importance to decide. First off, top to bottom, both of these provide rubies. It has the left arrow, so we do choose the left one. So it's going to automatically block that. Which I had considered that space, but I do like this other one more because we don't need tablets as much yet. So now what we talked about is we don't need it to explore. Now we have two options here. I want to get, all get your opinion. We can either go here, which is going to give us a fear card. It would give us one compass and a ruby. Or we can s and we'd have to spend one of the boats. Or we have the option to spend the free action for a compass, have three compasses, and use the other one for the boat and explore one of these other two sites. Which would still get us gain us a net us a coin ultimately. Um, and then we'd still get a fear card, but we'd get whatever comes out on the new location. One compass and ruby is worth the fear card. Well, this site gives you all three, so you're guaranteed a fear card if you go here. And my thinking is, I'm going to get a fear card if I explore a new location, regardless. But it opens up potentially different items. And that's future places to go. And um, to, to plan for more guardians out is more points. Because ultimately, I'm going to end up with a compass here. That I, well, if I, because I only have one worker for this round. Yeah, future places is kind of my thinking. So that means I have to play this for the free action to get a compass. Main action, boat, three compasses for a level one explore. And this idol would allow me to flip my assistant or turn it if I'd already used it. So it's better off right now if I get the coin. So I'm going to get this, first get the coin. And then we get another level one site. Which this one gives me a coin and an arrowhead automatically. So that's now coins we can potentially buy something with. And then another guardian comes out. So we knew there was going to be a guardian that we there's highly likely we couldn't defeat. So in my mind, it was fear card from a new location or fear card from a location where we've already been at. But if we get a guardian out, we have a place to potentially go back to and defeat in a future round if our rival doesn't do it first. So that was the full turn. Rival again. Round two, it will explore a new site, level one site. And we said that bottom row, left side because of this arrow. So it's gonna take this, it's gonna take this idol, place it there, it's gonna block that place for now it does bring another guardian out so this site allows a player to draw a card gain a coin and a tablet the guardian would require two compasses and an arrowhead to defeat the other guardian is basically discard a card from your hand uh, spend a compass and an arrowhead to defeat off to dinner 
Uh, Kids Planning, well, thank you for showing up tonight. I really enjoyed having you here, as always. I hope you have a wonderful dinner. Have <laughs> fun storming the castle. Uh, it's, it's more... I feel like eventually we're going to get steamed rolled by the boulder rolling down the temple as we run out with the idol. But yes, thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful evening. So that brought that out. Back to our turn. So now uh, we have two coins and an arrowhead. Again, while not as been a f hmm, don't want to do this. Let's see the assistants out right now are buying a item or artifact for one less cost. That's a solid choice. Okay. So what I see doing now, because we have the assistant that allows us to, I'm thinking use our assistant to upgrade our arrowhead to a ruby for free. Spinning that ruby to advance our journal gives us a compass and allows us to pick another assistant. Where well, the assistant I'm thinking we could get is the buy stuff cheaper option. And we also have coins we could buy some cards with. Uh, currently the one cost coin cards are the sturdy boots that give us a compass, place a worker with a discount of two boots. There is the watch, uh, which is a free action of gaining two coins, or pass, basically end your turn for the whole for the whole round, and finish the round to gain three coins. But that's basically two guaranteed coins I can buy a lot with. But it's kind of that balance of that's going to be a card in my hand that isn't as useful. Even though it is a boat travel, we do have a lot of boat sites out. Because in the future, buying more and more of these cards, while some are worth points, there's fewer, fewer and fewer options out there. Um, if we get the assistant, if we plan ahead for the assistant, that gives us discounts. This 3-1 would become 2, giving us 2 compasses each round. The only thing is we're going to start getting compasses as we go up this track. And we also know the rival is exploring. So I think before I do anything... Well, the upgrade's good. That's a compass guaranteed. Yeah, so I'm going to go and do the upgrade. Turn that... Arrowhead into Ruby for free. New assistant. Spin the Ruby to advance this track. Get myself a compass. Now, which assistant do we want? Do we want the one that allows us to basically buy something at one cheaper? Uh, gives us a compass for free. Or one that allows us to exile cards. Now keep in mind, we do already have the torch, which is allowing us to, to exile cards. Um, and we'll probably, based on the deck size, we've bought two cards. We're going to see it, I would assume, at least two more times, which is for, and we have still two fear cards, we're going to get one more. First one, so the buy stuff for cheaper. Good option. So now we have the uh, that's the whole turn. Because that used our main action. So now we'll do the rival again. And this is buying an artifact of lowest value. One. Uh, the Guardian's Ocarina. Uh, allows you to return a placed worker to your board. And each of your travel icons counts as planes this round. That is a strong one. If you... If you have enough compasses to afford it, that is 
one of my favorite ones to gain if possible. Fortunately, it won't disappear this round because it only takes from these next to the, the staff. Okay, so now we need to decide, do we want to buy something? Because yes, we could. The automobile is okay. I don't think it's strong enough at this point to just get. I think my first vote is buying the watch for additional coins and a boat location. Because we have so many boat locations out. That's one coin. We might get another coin one out if a two coin comes out. We have the discount we can try to use. Or we just go full discount right now. No. Yeah. Or we just go full discount. Use the assistant. Buy it for zero. And then it's still a two coin left for next round. I think using the free option first. So I'm going to yeah, discount it. Buy the watch bottom of the deck see what comes out okay so the machete came out it allows you to exile a card gain two compasses it would cost us four coins which we do not have so the question really comes down to do we want the sturdy boots that gives us a compass and allows us to place a work with the discount of two boots so basically Instead of using a fear card to travel with the boots, we get a compass and travel at the same time. Or it's worth a double buggy, which are good for the top locations. Once you have enough compasses, because you need six compasses up there. But we'll think about that while the rival goes. Places a worker at the compass site, does that. Um, I'm actually happy enough not to take the boots because it's only a one point card for the end of the game from playing this before so you want the sturdy boots okay I'm going to go for it I'll just finish what I was saying though I've played this before where I focus a lot on buying cards and deck building and I did worse than other players because the key aspect is the resources and advancing. And advancing gives you the compasses. So unless, well, because it's the only thing we can't afford. So if you want the boots, we'll buy the boots. But remember, we're going to have fear cards to use first that already give us a boot. And we're going to start coming up here anyway to the harder to travel to places. Yeah, so advancing up the track, to be able to do that, we need to get an arrowhead and two tablets next. So my feeling is waiting until next round before we decide what if we spend our idle or any of that, because we can't get enough of this round. So we need this maximum information, in my opinion. So at this, I would be willing to pass for the round and let the rival finish its two more actions for the round. So in a solo mode, the, the rival always has the 10 actions per round. And then, so yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and pass and continue. Um, but in the, in the later rounds, we end up with quite a few more actions, it seems. So this one is, it's going to advance up the research track. It prefers the far right side. And it will remove an assistant of the highest most stack, which is currently the middle. Which isn't a big deal because we already have both of our assistants. There's like one or two cards in the game that allow you to switch assistants. Other than that, we kind of have what we're going to be using. And the last one is placing a worker at a tablet site, which it does that. That's the round. So I'll go ahead and start, well, so we do this in the correct order so we don't miss anything. We return workers. Uh, let's grab all 
their workers first. Which are my workers. I do get a fear card for this guardian up here. Goes to my hand of cards that I my discard area. Then I shuffle those. Put them at the bottom of my deck. Refresh assistance. Let's turn back again. So to the bottom. We'll have to reset these rows. That advances, that shifts all the way over. Two new options. Shuffle these. Okay, so the cards that came out, we have a monkey medallion uh, that allows you to gain an item and place it on top of your deck. And then the, tr the trader's coins, which allows you to upgrade a tablet to an arrowhead or arrowhead to a ruby and also gain two coins. stack done. I get to draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so that shuffle is going to make this round a lot harder because all of my fear cards came out. Which... Oof. So that means I want to look for sites that allowed me to draw cards or exile cards because I don't have the torch that allows me to exile. So this is, and then I also drew a funding and explore card. So we do have two buggies. So we could at minimum travel to this buggy site. So we'll have to think about what we're gonna do there because it's gonna be a tougher round for us. First off, advance up here and get rid of one of these for our left of the two equals and do we want the automobile or ooh nope we'd have to yeah so i think our key option right now is spending a card that would allow us to go to that buggy site down here to draw a card, gain a coin, and gain a tablet. By doing so, we might draw into something that's going to help us before that site gets blocked. Otherwise, we just play into... Because these fear cards, all they can do is basically go to boot sites. So we can either go to one boot in the buggy or two boot sites. We're going here. We know next up we're going to want arrowhead two tablets. We do have arrowhead two tablets down here. Coins and compasses. Ooh. So, yeah, it's, th this is where it gets tricky and the management of what you do first can have a big impact on the rest of the round. Yeah, so I think what I'll need to do, so we have, ooh, do we want one of the cards that cost four coins? So one's a machete, exile card with two compasses, that's nice. Or the airplane. Place to work with the discount of an airplane. If discovering a new site, you'll also have discount. Ooh. I think with how we're accumulating fear cards, I might have to use that additional way to exile cards. So, using the funding for the coin along with the discount will allow us to buy a machete next turn. Unless, of course, the rival wipes it. But I think going to the buggy site is our best option right now. So, ex spending an explore card for the buggy. Taking one of our workers down here, 
allowing us to draw a card, which will be a watch. We're getting a coin and a tablet. Now this watch goes to our hand, and this does allow us to get, at least get some coins, which will be important to at least buy some cards. What I may do this round is go ahead and use our guardian to exile one of these fear cards from the stack as we play them, because otherwise we're just wasting it and the timing of it. But now we have the rival. It's the third round. It finds one new number one site at the lowest possible if there's a choice. But there's no choice. It takes this. There's a duplicate. So it goes under that as a negative. It will block this site. That's a tablet arrowhead site for the future. It does not add a guardian. They call him Majedi. Majedi kills. Okay, so I think, oh, what do we got going on here? So we have a tablet now. Three coins. We know we can get a coin here and two more coins. Oh, now, wait, no. Now we have a boat. We have enough coins. We're going to have four coins on the run. We have a boat. So we can travel to a boat location now. Yes, okay, I, th I think I see the steps. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to use the boat to travel here. Gains us a coin and an arrowhead. And then, in a future turn, we can turn in a compass that we already have, plus that arrowhead we just gain, and basically discard a fear card to get rid of that guardian, which the guardian has a draw card on it which we can use as a free action whenever we want. I think that is our strongest play right now. And then I still have two card, fear cards in my hand, a funding card for a coin. We would end up with one, five coins total. We could buy, start buying stuff if we wanted to. I'm on a boat, I'm on a boat, I'm on a mm -hmm boat, yo. Yes, family friendly stream. I will. I don't don't want to get banned before I even hit affiliate. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna spend the boat, get my coin and arrowhead, and yeah, accept the rival. Uh, places where you can get a compass. Remember, it goes top to bottom, so it does block this. We've spent both our workers, so we're not worried where it's going now. And like we talked about, we're now going to discard a card from our hand, spend a compass and an arrowhead, defeat the guardian. Yes! Thank you for the follow, Heart Board Games. I appreciate it. Whether you're watching in chat or doing it on a drive-by, I appreciate it either way. Everything helps. So as a free action, I'm going to go ahead and immediately draw that card, flip this over. I still get the point toward at the end of the game, but it's now been flipped. I can draw a card. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to flip this one to use that exile ability and ex exile that fear card. I just discarded. So that was that turn. I feel good about that now. Next, it's going to place a worker on a tablet space right there, and then we get to go again. Now, currently, we're sitting at four coins. We have, well, we drew another funding card, so we're just going to have a boatload of coins. And we're getting a raid. Well, welcome, Hardboard Games. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, Ronald Hart Games. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. I am Jaybird, the word. I like to play games and spread joy because gaming is one of my favorite hobbies. Thank you for the follow. Currently, I am playing this solo mode of Lost Ruins of Arnak. Um, everyone in chat is helping me decide the moves to make. Uh, so the solo compared to a two-player, two-plus-player game. So I've played this at solo, two, and three so far. 
and I feel it plays honestly about the same um, because of the rival setup and it's going to constantly be discovering new sites it's going to be blocking spaces advancing up the track and removing cards so it feels a lot like a multiplayer game we are currently in the middle of the third round um, the hand draw for this round was pitiful for myself I drew a, actually three fear cards you like it best as a two player game although it really works well as a three as well never played a solo the solo is really easy to do. It uses a rival stack of 10 tokens. You flip one for each turn, and the iconography on it tells you what it does. I'm actually sitting here with the solo variant rules right up in front of me because it's a quick and easy reference, but basically after the first round or two, you don't have to look at it very much. Um, so like the first round or two, it's going to seem like it's taking more turns than you, but then the later rounds, if you've built your engine correctly, uh, you seem to be taking more rounds. Uh, turns and it for the round so it does balance itself back out that way so we're talking about what to do on my turn now uh, you did just break 300 uh, elo in on bga so i'm making progress in this game although not enough i've not played it on bga yet um i've only played physically um i've played so i've played the solo before then i played a two solo or a two-player game over Discord, Zoom, whatever you want to call it, where we both own the game, and then I basically controlled the, the the cards and movements, and they would mirror the moves on their copy, so it was easy for them to read the cards. But that was a great way to play the two-player, and then some friends got it. I actually took it over to friends, and we played a three-player game, and they really enjoyed it, and immediately wanted to play it and get their own copy. Um... So I got four coins. The most expensive stuff out here is four, three, four. I can get two more coins for free. I have an upgrade assistant, and I also have a buy something cheaper assistant. Um, okay. Well, we know we want to advance up the track as well. I. It's a little risky to do, but it gives me another option. I can also take my idle. This one up here, cover the the spot get um I'm not, no actually get two tablets of it upgrade one tablet with my upgrade to have two tablets and arrowhead to advance my research track up here gaining me one compass airplane is fantastic turn one value greatly drops picking up late unless it's worth airdrop i i agree some of these cards do have a greater value the earlier you can pick them up later in the game it's more for the value of the card um for points i'm not sure i know precision compass as well yet um but yes i do agree airplane is very strong turn one if you're able to do it. Um, we've been a little lacking on compasses lately. So I'm thinking either machete or, or automobile. The automobile would allow us to start traveling higher up on this track. Um, this, when we go to discover more places. Precision is a four cost. One point lets you purchase an artifact at three compass discount. I may remember saying that. That is really strong. Yeah, so the more you can use that discount is helpful. Um, so, we know we're going to use these for coins because we've already used both of our workers. So I'm just going to grab those two coins for now. And then, is there a particular card y'all want me to pick up next? Like you talked about the airplane does go down in utilization now um, so either the automobile or machete we have built up our fear cards we have two in the deck or our deck currently now but we do have a torch that allows us to exile so we are even based on the start of the game we have not we're back we have not lessened it but we've got kept it from growing too fast 
but also the automobile gets us free compass that we can play for well what's the point of playing that for free I might as well just get the machete because that's two guaranteed compasses along with the exile if you'll agree disagree you can speak up now or forever hold your peace of mind and I will use my discount Correct. Both of my archaeologists have been played out. I have zero compasses. I have six coins, one tablet. I have not used either of my assistants this round. One is an upgrade. One is buy something at discount. Currently, I am down here on the research board, so I do need to start advancing those if possible. Um, so the next cost is going to be the two tablet, one arrowhead. So the only way to do that this round we take the auto here over machete, but that's personal play style. Yeah, because I feel I have a tendency to explore a site without taking care of the guardian. So I end up with fear cards that way. Um, because the machete, you can still play the card for two compasses, even if you don't exile something. And honestly, near the end of the game, I can start exiling the free action cards. Yeah. So I'm going to use the discount. And the yeah, right auto is pretty strong. It's less expensive. So I'll, I'll spend the two coins uh, because of the discount. Get the automobile. It would have been three. It was two with my discount. Bottom of the deck. Let's see what comes out now. That was the turn. Out came a Theodolite. Uh, gives us a coin. And then gain a compass for each of your workers already placed on the board. That is... I do like that. Because we tend to get our workers out pretty early. Against the rival. But that was my turn. So next rival... There's not many times I go for a style that avoids guardian kills unless I'm playing with the older, more difficult research track. Well, I don't typically avoid guardian kills. I, I find myself at a lack of resources by the time I'm exploring them. And so it's either ex research or deal with the guardian, one or the other. But the uh, rival action is place a worker on a coin site, uh, top to bottom. It has preference left to right. There's still only one left with coins, so we go that one. So I still have two fear cards in my hand. Doesn't really make a difference. They're going to get discarded. Kind of meh, because you generally want the compasses in order to explore new sites, so you're usually only getting one compass from it, because you can't play it before you have both down. Agree. So it, it's stronger early game because it helps you build up the compasses. Um, I've found, but I also found that it goes a long way with getting compasses towards buying artifacts, especially in a rival in a solo game with the rival consistently every round guaranteed to explore at least one new site. You don't have to explore as vigorously by yourself because you're guaranteed for them to explore for you. So I find using that to op to basically get my workers out and then get compasses to actually spend up here as opposed to spending them for the explore. If you play it uh, to get a compass for exploring, you're not maximizing the card. If you play it to maximize the card, you can't use it to f ex I, I, I can see what you're saying there, um, but that's part of the the inter the interesting balance I find in this game is you have to gauge at what point is the travel cost better than the bottom of the card and vice versa because every time you're not going to maximize the full card you're rarely in a game with less than six idols fair enough um 
I don't think I've played an idle heavy game before. But then again, I don't win as often, so maybe I need to try a different strategy. So we do have four coins left. We can get machete, we can get airplane, or we can get their Uh Like we talked about, the airplane is not as efficient now, especially late game. So besides just the points it would gain us and basically travel anywhere we want, it's not as strong. Um, or there's the machete we've talked about or it's cheaper to grab the Theolodot. James says Machete. Do we have a vote either way from... Uh, I haven't looked close enough to make sure how to say your name. Synthetic Divine. If that was the correct way to say it, you can tell me otherwise, but either way. Um, if you have a vote, we'll say it now, because like I said, uh, I take into consideration what chat wants me to take because like we've talked about we do have different play styles and since I don't always win maybe I need advice okay just the two words pronounced back to back okay synthetic divine okay so I think Based on what y'all have said, I'm going to have to go machete in this instance. James has said it. Y'all don't seem to care for the Theolodite. So I'm going to spend all four coins. I can pick it up. There we go. So that's the machete. Leave that off there. And the parrot came out uh, basically by playing that card, then discarding another card from your hand. You can gain a ruby. Which is okay. Like, there's already a boot site that lets you do the exact same thing. So, except for the ability to go to a boat location and the points at the end of the game. It's, yeah, it's really not a very strong card I agree so the rival action is to block a location that gives you arrowheads now the question becomes do we want to use our upgrade assistant to upgrade our tablet to an arrowhead and then also do we want to use our idol to cover these two points and get two tablets, allowing us to advance our research at least once. And gain a compass. Emma loves parrots. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do recommend the solo mode. It, it really has you, you think just as much as a multiplayer game. This rival mechanic is very simple to do. Um, and I, I feel that like in a multiplayer game, you're sometimes sitting around a little bit longer if you're playing against someone with AP or like to think through things, kind of like I'm talking through things. Versus the rival thing is just automatic. You know exactly what they're doing. And so you spend definitely more time thinking about your stuff. And so it shortens the game to basically how fast can you yourself play. Um, so do you all want me to spend the idle and go and work on upgrading research this round. Because my two remaining cards are fear cards. Can't do anything with them. They're basically discards. Because I don't think anything else is coming out soon enough. Best move here is probably, yeah, upgrade, idle for two to idle, and then research since you're not defeating your guardian. Yep. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the upgrade. So I'm just going to do this as one move. Those were both free actions. And now we're going to move up the research at cost of all three of those. We do gain a compass. Yep, always go for research. Spend that one point idle. <laughs> yep. Well, it, it doesn't necessarily 
it's not necessarily a one point idol. So as you cover these spaces, you can't get those points at the end of the game. So these uncovered spaces are worth up to 10 points. The first one you cover is one point that you don't get. The second one is two points you won't get now. So by covering both of those, that's three points I cannot earn at the end of the game. So you, you hope that the moves you make up there benefit you more than what you're spending. Good to know. I'm not sure I've gotten the stone key before to get those back. But that'll I'll keep that in mind. Hopefully we do see it come out to help us out. Um, that was the turn. Rival. It wants to take an item of the lowest point value starting with the right side. Uh, it's one, two, three, so it's just going to straight up take the lowest point value. So it's going to score points for all these cards it's taking at the end of the game. And now we have the whip exile this card to buy an artifact with a discount of four. When you're spending two coins to get that, I do like that get, being able to get that semi early game. Especially as these have come out that are expensive. Uh, we won't be able to get the one I like, uh, the, uh, the Guardian's Ocarina, which return a placed worker to your board. And each of your travel icons counts as an airplane this round. That one's really strong, so you can go keep exploring. Or if you're stuck at a Guardian site, it's really helpful. Um, but we're kind of at a standstill. I don't believe there's any more things we can do. So we're just going to finish off the rival actions. I think Whip is good at any time because it's exile even if it's a late game because the number of artifacts to choose from also increases. Very true. Like, yeah, it's pretty much good no matter when you have it. The more, I was thinking the earlier you get it, the more time you have to potentially choose to use it or not because you still have its travel ability if you don't decide to exile it and spend it. So to me, that's the more option, more times you have the, to choose from it. So because, especially how these cards get taken away each round, and then other people are buying or whatever, you're not guaranteed to see what you like. Even though it may be the cost that matches, the card you were looking for may not match. But again, the different play styles. Um, I believe we need to pass now, so we're just going to figure finish out the rival actions. Almost use it right away, unless every artifact on the board is off. It's more of a question of how long you have the good artifact cycling through your deck afterwards. See, I've found that I don't pick up artifacts to cycle through my deck because of their extra cost to use them again. Because you do have to spend a tablet every time you want to use them a second time, or when they're in your hand again. Yeah, yeah, Whip is one because of Indiana Jones. I I agree. It's it's hard to argue with the thematic use of a whip in this theme of a game. Placing a worker on a ruby site, easy enough. And then it's going to attempt to defeat a guardian. If it has one on its own sites, which it is not. Otherwise, and then it advances up here. Uh, choice of left or right, it wants left, so it's going to take this exile token off the board. And then its last action is to take an artifact of the lowest point value. One, two, two, takes the one. So that is our round. So we'll start resetting. Yeah, so the solo mode uses all of the archaeologists workers from the other three colors that you do not cho choose to play as. So take that one back. This one's going to give me a fear card right here. And true, but typically the benefit almost always outweighs the cost unless it's something like treasure chest. And you're just spinning the tablet for a card draw and a coin, which is not necessarily worth depending on your deck. Fair enough. I maybe again it's the play style I've tried and like I've said it has not always done me well so it is maybe something I need to consider trying more of of buying into the artifact system and making sure I get tablets which because I have the torch I know I'm going to get tablets so having some artifacts may not be bad to pair with 
But then again, my deck is getting to a point where I'm not likely to see as many cards by the end of the last round. So I've found that playing too hard in, in the deck builder aspect is actually worse. Because you don't see all the cards as many times as you would like to. Okay, so I've reset that, reset that. I need to shuffle these. So let's show what cards I went and drew. And y'all can start thinking about. So I got the torch, a fear card, explorer. Put that here. The automobile, and the machete. This is what I just drew. So a pretty uh, heavy compass hand. We can exile at least one fear card this round. Kind of wish we had drawn at least one more. So we may play into a your, uh, a draw card if we can. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Apparently it didn't like big deck. Which, yes, if we're not careful it can sound like other words. <laughs> but yes. When we're playing games, we easily talk about decks of cards. So I have to be, Nightbot is still learning the words we like. Uh, you know, always prioritize exploring, but I'm definitely not afraid to grab artifacts if available. Yeah, getting a big deck is only a good thing if you're either A, have a lot of card draw, or B, have probably all good cards and just racking up a lot of deck points. Very true. Um, I did play one game where I leaned very heavily into the card draw system. And almost every round I would play through my whole deck. But I played against someone that played into the upgrade system. So like we do have one of the assistants that upgrades, but they played super heavy into that. And we're they were kind of lucky enough that some of the the um, special upgrade tokens out there were the upgrades. So it played into their hand. And so I lost that way. But yeah, a, a big deck is not a great strategy for this game. Single best assistant, if you can use it right, is the coin for Arrowhead Jewel. True, that is a very solid one. Um, I like the, so the upgrade one's pretty good. The buy cheap is good. Or something like the Sacred jump Drum, getting this artifact into play is really strong after you've used both of your assistants and then flipping them back so you can use them again for the round. What's my fifth card? I can only see four. Oh, yeah. It got covered. It was the Explore card. So we do have some boats, some buggies, boot. Um, we're playing heavily into compasses, which we do know this guardian wants compasses. So as long as we can grab an arrowhead as well this round, we can deal with him pretty easily. Unless we want to lean heavily into exploring a new site, because we do have a, the automobile with a double buggy. Can we get enough compass in time though. I don't think we can get enough compass for it though. Uh, but first off, rival always goes first. So first they're going to check for guardians that they have. They're currently on. They are not. And then they also advance. I like the coin assistant more than most simply because it's versatile. People don't think about it, but it's roughly the equivalent of the coin plane assistant. True. You either get two coins or can spend those for a free plane and a braid on the silver side. You either get three coins, which is a 
It's a plane and a half on the gold side. A slight downgrade. Oh, that's true. I don't always think about the cost to hire a plane to travel anywhere. I have hardly ever used that because I typically have enough travel cost abilities. Um, so let's... Any thoughts on where y'all want to travel first? Oops. I'm dragging my pieces. Oops, there. So, um, we could use a fear card first if we wanted to travel to a cheap site before we end up exiling it with the torch, which gives us a tablet. We also have a machete, which allows us to exile it in the same way, two compasses. Um, or we can kind of forego even playing the fear card. Using coins for planes is not irregular for me because I often don't want to spend anything besides coin fear for travel. Yeah, I fear for, tra for is basically all you can use is travel. Yeah, if you don't have to use the cards you've been buying for ex for exploring, it's very helpful. Though honestly, we don't have any coins to do that with right now, so we will have to use these cards to travel in some way. Um, I do, like we've talked about, I typically play into a cycle system. Um, so we do have a way to cycle. If we want to play a buggy down here, I would have to probably play the machete instead of getting two compass on here. That means the automobile, well, it's a two, two or two. So I might as well play the automobile to go to this dig site. First move fear to tablet base, a great assistant. One tab, one arrow. Torch away the fear to two tabs, one arrow. Research book to refresh upgrade. Very true. That is a very solid plan. So that was the torch and fear. Well, th thanks for showing up tonight, James. I really appreciate it. I hope... Uh, you learned a lot about the game and if you would enjoy it or not yourself because uh, I know you said you had not played before I appreciate all your advice and the moves you would make and playing along I do hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful week and hope to see you next time so uh, synthetic divine my only concern about that is my, my thought about getting here to verify I just won't get blocked this allows me to cycle oh, can you see it over here so this side over here with the guardian on it allows me to draw a card get a coin and a tablet and guarantees my worker is there to then later defeat the guardian that needs two compasses in an arrowhead and we would still have the tablet we could upgrade um, we could still well no because we need the double tablet yeah so I see what you're doing well so first we'll do the double tablet Uh, you have to uh, simply because you have the extra guardian to live with and so discourages exploring a new site. Yeah, very true. I could just explore a new site instead of going there. Yeah, so what I'll do, I, I do like your suggestion. I'll go ahead and use the, the fear boot to double tab. For that turn, at least. 
So let's see what they're going to do. They're going to block a place with the tablet. Uh, starts top to bottom, no tablet here. They want to right to left. Right one, so it's going to block that one first. And then we're going to do what you talked about. Use the torch to exile the fear card. Gain a tablet. Upgrade to this. Upgrade by spending all... Th oh, we have to wait another turn to do that. Right. Yeah, we have to wait another turn to be able to do that. Getting ahead of myself. Love if the guardian is gone. If guardian is on, it's not worth taking the extra fear or losing the idol from exploration. Well, it's a little bit of both because if we get the guardian, it's worth five points. An idol is worth three. And so it's finding that balance of if we go to a new site, it's guaranteed fear. Almost guaranteed fear. There's small instances we can negate it. Well, here we know what we're dealing with. So I, I do see what you're saying, though. You anticipate killing the guardian on the new site, though. Um, yeah, we can try. I've, I typically have bad luck with that, so I've shied a little bit more away from it. Next for this one is explore track, taking from the t uh, high stack over here. Oof. That is the the hard thing about the solo mode. It does ex it does advance up the exploration track very or the research track very fast, and so it's guaranteed to get to the top. I guess that's fair enough. I have not looked at all of the di different guardians and their cost as closely to know which ones are easier to typically defeat. Um, but we did say we were going to do this next. Spin these three. Advance this up. Wrote, uh, flip this and it also resets it as well. And the next time I use that we can get a compass as well. And then next on here. Place to block coins. Topmost. Usually. Okay, fair enough. I think I've played into where I don't always spend those idols because I'm a little behind on points, so I try to save those points. But I, I can see where the cost can be negated using the idol. So I think... Getting to a point where my deck is thick enough that I won't need this card again. So I'm going to free action compass, which I don't have to exile with this, but I can play the machete for two more compasses. And then still hold on to the automobile with the double buggy, allowing me to travel around here pretty easily. Because the machete is a single buggy. The exploration should be your travel symbol. Okay, well, so we'll retcon that real quick. So currently, exploration is a boat. Which, to go to a new boat location, is to basically refresh an idol or a refresh an assistant. Or, I, or there's a guaranteed fear with a compass and a ruby. Now next up on the track I need a ruby tablet or an arrowhead tablet coin. Automobile is extra compass and you only need the double travel unless you're planning to go to the top row now. Yeah. You can still use the upgrade assistant for the free compass. And then refresh them, even if you ought not to upgrade a resource. True. So you're saying use the auto for its free compasses. Because I would need at least one more compass.
let me take a quick look at these artifacts um, because I can get what, one, two, three, four, five artifacts. Yes, auto upgrade the system for compass, explore to travel, refresh the system. Okay. Okay, we'll try it, because like I said, I have not had the best of luck in this game always, so I might as well try a different strategy. So, auto, double compass, assistant to the compass, explore boat here to refresh, costing three compasses. level one sight gets me a compass and an arrowhead and the guardian is discard a card a coin and a arrowhead So let's see what the artifact does. Or rival. Flux a compass sight on the right side. Okay, so now we have two compasses in an arrowhead. We need a coin, arrowhead, and discard a card for the spider. Now we could get the coin by using our idol. Coin gets us, does a coin and a compass. Leaves us with three compasses, no machete. But really, there's not a card we necessarily have to discard. This is worth two compasses, and we wouldn't get a few. So it almost negates the need for that, because we can't make use of the exile anyway three compasses plus our well we can get one more compass if we wanted to um, but we can also use our assistant for a discount for any of these one is discard a card to refresh two assistants one is four coins and a fear one is a fear coin and three tablets, which would be useful. Use your upgrade assistant to turn the arrowhead to a jewel. Use your buy assistant and three compasses to get the artifact for three tablets. Take the research to the tab jewel. Use your idol to get an arrowhead. Defeat the Guardian with the discard. Use the Guardian tablet to ex exile the fear the artifact gave you. Nice. Yeah, you've definitely played this a lot more to see all those moves ahead. I've, I've not played this enough to think through all the different moves that floor. So let's try this. So we're going to do upgrade. Well, for one that's going to give us compass, it's going to upgrade to jewel. That was your free move. We're going to spend the this one, three compasses for the discount for this one, which immediately happens. So we get a coin and three tablets. Plus a fear. No shift. That was the turn. Take the research to the tab, Joel. 
for thinking that one. Use your idol to get an arrowhead. Defeat the guardian with the discard. Guardian. Okay. Let's get the rival done and then we'll continue. It's going to take lowest value is that one. Let's make sure I do these moves right. So we got the that we got the artifact. Take the research to the tab jewel, which we're going to do now. Jewel and tablet gets us a coin. So that's the turn, but we also get a compass for the advance. Rival. Round four explores a level two site and adds a guardian far left. So it's going to take both of these. Let's see which one found. Well, it gets it's going to be a negative at least on that one for being the same. And a tablet goes here. And this is going to be this. Okay, now back to our turn. We said use the idol to get an arrowhead for free. We're going to use discard a card, coin, arrowhead to defeat. Now to go there, that's the, well, for a free action, we're going to just exile the fear card immediately since it's a free action. That goes there. That's a turn. Next we have, it wants to block arrowhead. And now what can we do? Okay, so we currently have a compass, a coin, two tablets. Coin's not enough. We can't buy anything from a card row now if we wanted to. The next advance would be a coin and a ruby, or a coin tablet arrowhead, which we don't have. We don't have cards, uh, nothing to defeat, assistance use, so I believe that's all we can do now. Moves us on to the rival again, so we're basically passing for the rest of the round. Costs or lowest value is that one. Now you're stuck setting up for the next turn. I might have opted for researching with the. I. Da, 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 if you knew the exact comments for your deck and wasn't worried about. Well, I wanted to research with the book. I did not have everything I needed to do so. Because the options are double arrowhead, ruby tablet, or arrowhead tablet coin. And we didn't have the arrowhead. Oh, rather than fighting the guardian. True, but we negated the fear gained from it. There's a five point play. Advancing the research tablet would have been one, one card draw at best. And refresh. Um, this to a double discount. I think we made our best play there. I'm okay with it. I think I think the moves you said the first time were slightly better. Because advancing here, that's two points at best right then versus five guaranteed points. Yeah, because I don't, I'm not sure what the deck is right now. But yeah, we'll set it for the next round. Uh, but I also don't get any fear cards this round, because there's no guardians left. It will be the last round.
Oh, I should have removed one of these because it did arrive there first. Yeah, I found I'm not as risky in this game because most of the times I take a risk, I don't do well. So yeah, I do like the optimal guaranteed point system that, that you're referring to. And the one you came up with was a lot better than what I was initially seeing. So it may have then been that previous plays of this, I'm not seeing far enough, enough steps ahead to maximize everything. Or that I'm just not using my idols efficiently enough. Especially like if I did it with the next idol, idol that's four point loss. I have to make sure whatever we do with it nets us five or more points. So it's finding that balance. Okay, we'll reset this, move on to the final round. And hopefully you've done enough to set me back on the right track to beat this rival. Now I did say that we're playing, so the rival has five tiles that are always in the game, and then five sets of tiles that are either green, that each set is a green and a red, and you choose either the green or the red from each set. And basically how many reds you have is the harder it is, and we're playing with two reds. You can only try to think three to four turns ahead in this, at least until it hits an unknown factor like exploring a new site. Yeah. I try to. Sometimes I miss it because I'm so focused on one track that I miss that another track is more optimal. Um, so let's draw what five cards we're going to have for the round. Hopefully it's better this time. I'll go and show them off real quick. So first we're going to have the watch. Then we're going to have funding. Explore, fund, fear. So not necessarily an optimal round. Um, I'm sure you'll find a way to see advance it farther than I see it yet. Let's put the watch on top so you can see it. And the, like we said, the rival always gets to go first. And they're going to take the cheapest which there's only one. I'm just going to take the item. Okay, so what artifacts can I uh, We have a uh, treasure chest we've seen before draw a card and a coin. Not bad. I need to refresh these. The sundial, two tablets, or pass to gain. A ruby, not as powerful anymore. Because I would need the ruby to spend it. Yep, don't forget to refresh assistance. I always do it like when I look back at my board and be like, oh, I didn't refresh those this round. We have the ancient wine. Gives us a coin and use the effect on the gold side of one assistant available on the supply board. Ooh, that may not be a bad option to play into because the assistant, uh, the assistants out there currently are, you can spend a coin on uh, the gold side of it is spend a coin for an arrowhead or a ruby would be a good way to get a ruby that we can advance with. So let's see. Optimally, we need a way to get rid of a fear card. airplane which is going to be hard to get probably won't go to that guardian site um, so again we have the watch which is basically two coins or boat travel we have a fear for boot two funding and one explore card Yeah, it's definitely which site to go to. Um, so I don't want more fear cards, even though 
unless I can get, uh, unless the play with those is better. This should give me coin and arrowhead. I already have one of the tablets. Allows me to advance here, draw a card, and refresh my assistant. So I want to make sure I use the assistant before I do that. Or advance up that way. If I go here first, I guarantees. Compass. I'd put me at two compass. Arrowhead. Um, later, if I get the ruby, and a, I'd have to get at least one more coin. Uh, one more coin, which I have in my hand. Events here gives me one additional compass, three compass I can explore up here if I choose to. Refreshing an assistant again. I uh, suggest gold with horse to. Gold with the buggy. Is there a specific site you're recommending? Because what I'm seeing right now, the tablet arrowhead here. What steps am I not seeing? Because I see that gets me at least the arrowhead, leaves me with two tablets. I can upgrade one tablet to an arrowhead for sure. Because I'm more on the fence about first boating to here getting compass arrowhead which gives me enough to advance here on this track so I'd have to make sure I spend my discount up here but that would uh, give me the one additional dis uh, to then effectively use the other side of that. I'd need the coin though for my other card. I could then uh, later explore the buggy site. Getting your true. Okay, I missed that. If I see if I could get enough Well, part of it I was thinking, is there enough compass to get another idol, too? Because I can upgrade. Well, I upgrade now. Gets me an arrowhead. Gives me enough to do that over there. Leaves me with two compass. I can get another compass here to explore with the buggy. Definitely get another idol. I just don't know if you're going to be able to get enough compasses to go to a tier two site. Yeah, I don't think I can get enough for a tier two. So I'm determining which, because if I go, if I place here, I don't think I can get enough. Because I'd have to spend, well, we know we're going to spend the watch for coins, right? Because I'm going to need one for this and one for the gold side of that over there. For sure. Then that leaves these. One free compass. Buggy boat. I think. You have to anticipate that the upgrade with the book will get you a card draw, which has a decent chance of the very least giving you a travel symbol. True. Only if yours is really bad. Very true. 
So I think instead of going to a travel site now. So we, so to maximize information we have, I think using my assistant, gaining compass, upgrading for free, allows me to go ahead and research immediately and draw that card. From there we can maximize information. Because if we do this now, we're still waiting to know what we can do later and where we can travel best. So th that's where I'm feeling, unless you think otherwise now. Like true, you want to typically travel as soon as possible so it's not blocked. But it's early enough in the round. I have enough options. It's true, it has less overall potential than the move you would make. Yours is the safer play, I do agree with that. Because um, you're trying to go here. It's another tablet. Arrowhead. You're upgrading for sure to get the ruby and the coin. Allows that to happen. But we're coin short, so we'd have to use the other coin. Guarantees compass. I'd have to get another compass from. Advancing there. So that's one, two, three. Okay, so we're going to go. But then that does not leave any way to explore up here, if what I'm saying. Because I'd have to use this here. I'd have to use the boat for that. Okay, we're going to try what you, you said. So we're going to use the Explore Buggy. Um, one Exploration Cart. Uh, two Funds, one Explorer. Watch Fear. Then the Upgrade Assistant are long enough to give you three. As I said, you don't see hitting... Yeah, I won't hit Tier 2. My thought is... I can advance that early to see what I can do before I pick a site to travel to. Or I just go ahead and travel... Because I have three different sides for arrowheads. It's going to pick far left or far right. It prefers top row. So it's going to take one of these two out first. So it won't take this out. But honestly, if it's going to take arrowhead, it's going to take the very top. If it takes coin, there. It takes compass, there. Then if it would take tablets down here. Whew. Um, yeah, you're... Said, I'm just not seeing the future steps, but I'll go with it. I will make sure I use one compass on the board, one for explore, one for upgrade assistance. So you'll have enough compasses. Although I'm trying to remember the travel symbol composition of my hand. Sorry. Uh, boot two boat two buggy. Because my thought is, if I'm going to upgrade or basically travel up the research with my magnifying glass with a ruby and a coin that also gives me a compass so I don't need the explorer for its compass cost because I'm going to get it down here so what I need the most um, so by upgrading this to there that guarantees this jump I could spend this to travel later if I wanted to for a buggy location which if I went to the coin place the coin could be spent up there but if I did this I could not afford the artifact. Watch can give you the plane if needed True, and travel anywhere. Uh, 
Oh, no, but I can't make use of that, so that's just a one point play, so I don't care about the rope right now. It's a less ditch effort. Um, yeah, because the only way I can advance up here is I would need three compass initially. Actually, only two would be needed. with my second assistant giving me the additional gold I would need for this well it's been a gold for that I'd have one gold left to do that I'd have to get one more gold with one of these love rope turn one less it's useless late game if it goes to the bottom of the deck and you don't have large backpack. Very true. Yeah. The rope is basically just a cheap point play at the end if you happen to have coins left at this point. So I think my very first move. I'm going to rotate the assistant and upgrade. Guaranteed for free. And then I'm going to freely get a compass. To then allow me to discount Very true. Yeah, so I didn't need this card that yet. Came from the assistant first. I can discount play to automatically do this. Because upgrade moving this up is a three point play. But I'd have to use a coin right now and get one more coin. Yeah, so I'm going to get a coin for my funding. One of the fundings. For free. Discount for the ancient wine to wait I didn't need to do my funding yet because I get the coin from the ancient wine use the effect from the gold side of this one to spend a coin for a ruby and that means next turn I can advance up here getting me another compass enough to explore Nope, no, I just spent those compasses. We'll figure it out. But that revealed the Pathfinder staff, relocated place to worker to a tent or a number one site. So let's see what this does. And fifth round, it explores a level two site. Far right. It already has a tablet there. And this one is another tablet. Oh, that's some negative points for it at least. So you're saying we've got 100% gone for the book research before you go glass research. Well, we can. Like, I, I felt like that's what I talked about the book first, but now I have the options for both because I have funding in my hand to get a coin so I can afford both two turns in a row. So I will do the book first so we can make the decision off the card draw. Which is what we're doing now. So a coin arrow tablet to advance to card draw into a fear card. That's the one thing we didn't want. <laughs> of course. Well, we'll make do what I may do. Well, I think what well, we guys forgot the rival does. It covers a spot that gives it coins, top to bottom, that one. Before even setting up, uh, when, oh, before making the one play. Fair enough. 
uh, my concern was because the rival has a card, what takes the lowest, well, because it's using the green tile, it takes the lowest artifact or lowest point value artifact, um, either left or right. There's only two ones, so it was a 50 for 50 chance it could take it, and if it f pulled from the stack, um, which felt riskier than it blocking a site. Because now I can easily use a funding card to. Oh, that would be double. That's a compass there. Compass here. Get the coin I need. Tablet. Okay, we said we can travel with the watch no matter what. That's a buggy. But at this point, two fears, two funds, explore, and watch. Now inside of taking the wine, guarantee the jewel is that now that there's no, the risk of not being able to explore, and quite simply the idol and guardian, like we have had more value. That's a very solid point. Point taken. But what I can do is I have an explorer for a compass. If I advance up here by using I need to use one of my fundings for the coin. Allows me to advance. That gives me a compass. Compass here. And then I can go to this site that gives me a compass. Nope, I'm going big risk, big reward. I don't have enough. Oh, no, I could. I'd have to spend both of those, though. Be double compass and that. That would be there. Sorry. I'm, so if I spend a coin, I'm not going to have to use a funding for a coin. So I'm thinking which one to use, the buggies or boats. And I also have the watch for an airplane. Um, but if I went fund the boat funding for the coin, allows me to advance here for one compass. Spend a double buggy, so my explore and funding to play here guarantees me two more compass and a ruby and I still have two boots yeah and then holding in my hand would be a watch and boots so I think first move big risk, big reward is I'm going to go double buggy to here to get double compass ruby to make sure it does not get blocked. And then I can explore a site that gets me a compass next here using my plane watch to go there gives me a third compass and an arrowhead yes thank you for that reminder I got ahead of myself Let's go ahead and do this. It's going to cover a ruby site, a left preference there. So now what we can do, because we needed a boat, that gets us the coin we need. So 
Yes. I'm going to use my funding boat to go here. Oh, I can't do that now. I took a risk and I went too far. Yeah, I don't think I can use enough compasses now. Unless... nope. Because I have to spend here to do it. Okay, uh, uh, this, that assistant alone can get you two tablets for free, if need be true. Funding jewel to move up for the compass. Because I have the ruby. At this point, I have to get a coin to advance for another compass. So I'd have to use my watch for its coins. Oh no, because I still have the funding in my hand. I thought I was using it for the travel. So funding for the coin, advance for the compass, allows me to travel, it gets me another coin. Big risk, big reward. Yep, we're doing it. Coin, advance coin, ruby, for compass for the turn. Yep, and the researcher blocks an arrowhead. And so now we have to, our only choice now, that gives us a coin in return. Two boots on the ground. Because I don't think a refresh assistant is our best option right now. So we're gonna we'd go for the coin. Probably want to travel to the assistant refresh since you have a reasonably high probability of getting a tap or Ooh, I didn't think through that one, but yes, that's a good advice. So yes, we will be doing that. Spending Yep. Now I've lost track. Did I already do the Rival action between turns. Yeah, if I get really unlucky, true. Um, trying to think through what I'll, because it's had one, two, three, four. I've done one, two, three, four. No, it needs to go. No, it's done five. So, yeah, it is my turn. You don't think I did? Okay, we'll do a rival action then. I couldn't remember. Uh, it's going to buy the lowest. Value prefers left. It's going to take this one. So now, for sure, it is my turn. We're going to spend three compasses and the watch to hire, get the coins, hire a plane to go here. Here's what it all rides on. Okay, well, we get a oh, first refresh. Get a coin and two tablets. Which ooh. now? Well, let's do the rival first, so I don't forget. It wants to attempt to overcome a guardian, which it is not currently at a guardian site. It would advance up this track if not.
for Rover cannot advance because they have already reached the Lost Temple, give them a six point tile instead. So they take a six point tile for attempting to advance here. It's a little rough. Give you a second to think through, yeah. Because I'm, I'm holding two fear cards right now. Oh, I didn't put out the Guardian, which takes three tablets. I don't want to interrupt your thinking, but I think I have a good idea on this one. And you can tell me if you don't like it. Use your buying assistant, get two tablets for free. Upgrade assistant one to an arrowhead, advance to the right side of the track, then use the upgrade bonus to turn a tab to an arrow. See your card draw work from there. To one point. I think I'm working about the same where you are. But I think I can actually do a little bit more. Because if I use my... How do I... Where was I? If I use my coin and my ruby to advance my research book, I get three compasses. I can then use my buying assistant, spend two of those compasses on the guardian's crown to move a guardian to an unoccupied space, which could be down here, which activates it to get me a tablet and an arrowhead, which would already give me enough to also advance the spyglass to draw a card, get a coin, Leaving me with the compass left. If I upgrade something, it gives me another compass, which I can still do the sundial. Two more tablets. And with that upgrade, I get another arrowhead, allowing me to upgrade my research journal as well to get an, another artifact for free. If that made sense. Because this to here gets me three. Two of those would be here. This lets this move here for this. Those resources allow me to move this here. I mean, uh, the, I would gain another tablet. Where was I? By getting a compass here, upgrading the. Mm, fair enough. if we took that first the two with the free two tablets upgrade once I could still do what you're what I was talking about but afterwards in a different order so yeah we'll we'll go with what you were talking about first we'll do this for free 
immediately get the two tablets. And we'll wait to upgrade till the next turn. It's going to block a compass site. So now we upgrade, we gain a compass, arrowhead, we spend to gain a coin, to draw a card, and we draw, of course, we draw another fear card. We are, our luck of the draw tonight is down the drain. See what pops out. Uh, the stone key is move one idol on your player board from slot back to your supply crates. Oh, there's the stone key you were talking about. So that potential of that. Uh, should have lost. Should have lost three compasses total, two to the research. Oh, you mean tablets. Lost two here. Oh, true. Uh, so one more gone. So, well now we do have coins, tablet, ruby. I'm holding three fear cards is how terrible this is now. Um, is there a place we would want to use our idol token? Because potentially there's thought of that. I could get that up there, but require so at the end. I need all that. So what could I gain now to be enough? Not much of enough. Not unless I could activate. There's compasses there. Also, you didn't get a coin. No, 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 it was an upgrade that was on this. It was a coin on that. That was my bonus. Yeah, that spot was a coin. Um... I have not had any upgrades in the pile I've set aside. I can show you. So everything I've pulled aside from going up the track, there have been no upgrades. There've, so it was indeed a coin, unfortunately. So I've not had any upgrades. Or any of the upgrade bonus, uh, upgrade bonuses. So it was unfortunately a coin. Yeah, feel free to try to clip it, but I don't have any of the upgrade bonus tokens. None of them got played out this game. It unfortunately may have been a little bit harder to see on the screen. 
Yeah, I wish it was an upgrade, but... I just went back and checked the vision. You're up to the right. It's the distance of the camera from the top of the board. You can only see the darker curve of the right side. I take that curve to be an upgrade. You can't see the bottom left shine at all. I do apologize for that. Um, if there's ever a component you want me to pick up and show to the camera to verify anything, just let me know. I do apologize if it was harder to see. I guarantee it's final column. Now it's just a question of whether to take risks to potentially add more than that. Well, that's... Yeah, because I'm holding three for your cards, so they're... It's all out on the board, what I can and can't do. Wait, so that... I'd have to get another coin, though. So... I could spin that... Tablet Ruby. Would be that one. Get me a compass. I would have the coin compass, so I'd have to get a ruby spinning a coin. Still only one compass. Yeah, because I'm think I'm I'm thinking through if I can maximize. Cause I can get if I decide to upgrade this using the ruby and coin I currently have. Give me three compasses, four total. I could spin the four. Well, I could easily use the idol for the ruby to advance the magnifying glass. That'd be those. I'd leave that. I could spend the... Don't... What did I spend all four? To move that. I could move the idol back off using three compasses. giving me another ruby and that would advance my book as well considering the same so yeah I'm gonna go risk on that so just straight up so I do that oh Also considering that I could book up with this cost gets me compasses. Compasses could be spent on the Guardian's Crown. Moving this to here, tablet arrow to here with the coin I already have. Leaving these free. I could still no, but I wouldn't be able to keep going. I could still get the ruby, but the idol would be there again. No different tablet, compass. I 
wouldn't be enough to do more with. Maximization, I'm trying to figure out how to use the three compasses from the book research to still guarantee the final column, because without the final column, it's pointless. Uh, yeah, there's two different ways I can do it. So first, I can use all four compasses for two points, moving this guardian down here, getting me a tablet and an arrowhead. Then I would have the coin to spend to move to here. I'd still have to use the idol to get a ruby. I would still have, oh, I wouldn't have a coin at that point. To go up. So yes, that would not work. But if I went up here, got the compasses, stone key, um, because I could go ruby with that. I already have the tablet for the first move. I still would have those left. Stone key with three of the four compasses to get the idol back. I wouldn't have a coin to spend on the next ruby though. Yeah, you might be right. Um, unless... Click a book. Book it. to if I, uh, let's see if I do this if I did that I don't want to do that though that tablet arrow I have a free tablet to move again get something for free comes down to do I want to draw cards oh how many cards left in my deck one two three four five Automobile, Machete, Explorer. Uh, yeah, so there's at least one Explorer, Machete, I think we're holding all the fear. Auto Machete, Explorer. I'm not sure what the other two are at the moment. Torch is one of them. Which would be a tablet. Which we can't upgrade, but we can do that with. Or is it the consideration of using the idol to draw a card? How risky is that? So I guarantee that. I'd have to spin that to go to the top. That's a flat out no move. <laughs> you're good you're probably a lot better at mentally thinking through all the options and remember every card we've bought
with the research and with the book ends up looking slightly short. Um, getting the magnifying glass all the way up the track currently is a nine point play. I think I see a way for more points. Bear with me and see if I've done this right. I could A, use the idle for uh, double tablets, which defeats this guardian with the current tablet I have. Advancing this with this cost, so the ruby and the coin, gets me three compasses, four total, which I can spend on the guardian's crown to move and get an arrowhead and a tablet. With the plane from the this guardian and the arrowhead from this, I can defeat this guardian, which allows me, that's ten points right there, plus I can get rid of a card one of these fear cards that's actually a 13 point play because it's two fear cards I'm not getting negating one more fear card as opposed to only nine points up here and that leaves me with a compass tablet coin which I know isn't enough to advance but it's still a higher You're right. I can't kill the second one to move it. So it's only a five, six, seven point play. Joy math, yep. I think we're at a standstill. I can go five, yeah. Like we said, we can go five. If I move that one. Still no airplane. Yep, I think we're at a point of... Maximum point is... Just straight up the track. Unless I want full risk. That's four. I can't get five points out of that, can I? However, five from killing the first one. Research with the book. Get the guardian. Move to the tablet arrow. Research with the glass is still overall better. Yeah, because we got four points, six, that's two points up here, four points here, that's six, plus five, eleven, so yeah, that is more points, so yeah. Yeah, so guardian movement is, is going to be the stronger one here. So that means the first play we have to do is, well, not necessarily this one, it's going to be just advancing up here. because we want enough compasses to move as fast as we can to cover this one. So idle into the three tablets, get the guardian kill, coin and gem to research with the book for three compasses by the guardian movement artifact, move the second artifact to the tablet mirror, you still have coin left to research with the glass. Correct. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to, yep, coin and ruby up for three first. They go research track, so they get a six. And they would remove one of these far right, wouldn't make a difference. And now we have enough to one, two, three, four, take this card, immediately use the effect, 
And by getting that card, that's also a two-point card. So that's another bonus on top of that. So we can move this to here. Tablet arrow, which we said we needed for that over there. We're gonna do its last move, which it wants to cover a tablet location. Uh, highest up is one of these two. Uh, since there's not enough stack, the very first one was a right. Covers the one we just activated, so we did it just in time. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and... Well, we need to advance those first, just in case something happens. And now we can, we'll go ahead and spin the three things to advance this way. So now make sure that the point difference, because we're covering four points to get enough to pick up five and negate one. So that's six, six point difference over here, four points. So it's really a two point increase. Correct. Uh, so yeah, because if we held here, it's four points from that. If we cover it, we gain it's five, six, yeah, two point more, two points more, two point, yep. And then this up here, if it worked, would have been f straight up five points up, but it's only one point play. And we still lose a point here. Yeah. So we're gonna cover double tablet. At this point, the rival has no more action, so it's just us now. I'm gonna spin the three. Of the guardian. So that won't be a negative at least. That leaves us with Oh, that's an airplane kit. Won't be able to do anything with it. One compass. Everything's too expensive, and that is final. So let's see if we were able to catch up to the rival or not with those last few moves. We did get quite a few decent guardians, though, which was very nice. Yeah, regardless if we won or not, uh, GG indeed. Thank you for all the help. So we'll, we'll try to add up all these points real quick. Especially because the scoring for the rival is a little unique to learn. So I'm going to score the rival first. So first, their research track. Uh, they score points on the position of their magnifying glass. And for temple tiles, for guardians. Uh, so first, their track space is 23. Tiles, they took 12 points for our idols. So this is where it's unique in that they get three points for each unique idol. So they get, that's nine. But because all these extra ones that were the mat the same, they actually get negative points for those. So that's negative one point for each of those. So that's only five points for that. Uh, they didn't take any guardians. Score the points from the cards they picked up. Uh, they took a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And of course, no fear cards for them. So they, they got a total of 23 plus 12 is 35, plus 5 is 40, plus 9 is 49. I think we have a decent chance of beating that. So first up on the research track, we took 16 plus 6 is going to be, what, 22? But no additional tiles here. Uh, idols, total of 12. 
uh, no bonuses because we covered the spaces for the guardians. We have a total of four. Uh, five each is 20. For our cards, we are, uh, let's sort these out real quick. The ones that don't score, I'll drop. Okay, so one, two, three, five, six, nine, eleven, twelve, right there. And three fear for negative three. The max score I've gotten there was a hundred exactly. Uh yeah, I've definitely not done that well. So I do appreciate your help. Uh I I definitely I think all the tips you gave me helped maximize how we did. So 22 plus 12 is 34, plus 20 is 54, plus 12 is 66, minus 3 is 63. So we did indeed beat the rival, 49 to 63. Nice win we got there. Um, and that was considered a... So I'll try to show you. So like I said, some of these have red, some have green. Um, all the red and green ones came in a set of one green, one red, and you pick the green or the red. Red is considered harder to use, GG indeed, and then there are some of these that are in every game that don't have a color on them. So you choose one from the, each of the sets, so you always have ten to use. We essentially played two reds, which is kind of like a, if you consider it from a one to six star, uh, where one is all green, six is all reds, we played basically a three star difficulty and one so especially with the way you were thinking through things and playing i could easily see you beating it at a higher difficulty than this was um with that i will be calling it a night um let's see who else is streaming and i will attempt to raid someone else to share the twitch love uh so I'll switch my camera real quick, and if there's anyone that you know that is streaming right now that you would like to attempt to rate into, feel free to post it. Uh, you average 70 to 90, depending on what your opponent's doing, how good. Yeah, so you, you definitely know what you're doing on this game. I don't have as many plays, and so I'm not as good at it yet. So I definitely appreciate it everything you were talking through. Let's see who's currently on. Uh, we got we got someone else doing a solo playthrough of a game. They're playing Flourish. Uh, we got someone playing Ticket to Ride USA. So if you have a, an opinion on who, on what you would like to see next, or what they're playing, feel free to speak up. Otherwise, I typically will pick someone that has the least amount of viewers to help view their viewer rating just as much as everyone has helped me as they rate into me. So I think, let's see, and I think Meeple Knights playing Ticket to Ride would be good to write into. Make sure I get this spelled right, because it doesn't like it if you mess, mess up. So let's try this. So thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for playing along. Great game. And I hope you have a wonderful evening, wonderful week. And as always, play games and spread joy.